Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A winter storm dumping snow and then rain overnight. It is almost on our doorstep, and that comes with some strong, gusty winds on the other side of it that's going to be ramping up tonight. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. It is indeed the calm before the storm. <laughs> Hate to use the cliche, but it is so true right now. It's very apropos. <laughs> uh, good to have you with us here at noon as we get ready for the weekend and as we bring in Ashley. So much to kind of sort out with this storm, Ashley. Like we've been saying, it's kind of a triple threat, even a quadruple threat. Yeah, so we're talking snow, rain, gusty winds, and behind this sub-zero wind chills. So it's going to be a doozy. We've had winter taking it easy on us up until this point. So winter weather advisory will go into effect an hour from now for all of southeastern Michigan. That's going to take us all the way into 7 o'clock tomorrow evening because of all those variables that we just talked about. So as we take a look at those weather threats, really the two main ones will be the heavy snow with the onset of this system and then the whipping winds on the back edge that will create blowing snow and possibly whiteout conditions and we're not ruling out maybe a few power outages out of this system but in between that will be some rain and we'll have to see if there's a dry slot or else we could see some refreezing with the rain that rolls through. So temperatures right now, mid to upper 30s. So these temperatures, as they continue to rise, I think are really showing that we will see rain mixing in with the system. Wind gusts right now, as much as 20 to 30 miles per hour, and they'll just get greater from here. 50 mile per hour wind gusts by the time we get to your Saturday. Wind chill readings, though, are in the 20s. So that's what it feels like as you step outside. But you can see this massive system stretching all the way up now, closer to Marquette and down past Nashville. There's the rain sector with the warmer air, and then we have the snow that's with the colder air and we're going to get a little bit of both as that system pushes to the north right now some flurries being picked up on radar but as I check in with sky conditions not all that making it to the surface in fact we've had a few breaks in the clouds on the east side so a quick look at today's forecast upper 30s snow moving in this afternoon you can track it on radar as well with our forewarned weather app so if you haven't done so make sure you download it for free in your app store today Something else we've been talking about with this storm as we watch it closely is that's the danger of power outages throughout the Absolutely. area. Absolutely. Wind gusts of 50 miles per hour can do that. DTE is preparing. They're planning for it. Let's get out to Megan Woods for how the company is ramping up operations following a lot of frustration from all the power outages we've seen lately. Rhonda, Jason, that's right. So just like us, DTE has been watching closely this forecast. They say they've been monitoring it all week to see if it will impact customers. Now, between the snow, the wind, and frigid temperatures, there is a potential for outages. DTE says they have thousands of people who are on standby to help. 1,100 linemen from DTE and across the country uh, preparing to offer support in case power needs to be restored. They also have teams Teams that will be already strategically placed in communities in the midst of uh, this weather. And Bill Hutchinson, the company's director for storm emergency preparedness and response, spoke to us about what he's so focused on. Particular concern of mine this weekend is the drop in temperature. It's going to be cold outside. While we hope to see limited impact to our electric system, it's important to be prepared and check in on others in case they need assistance. We'll also have snow on the ground. This could present a hazard if wires come down. They could be hard to see. So people need to exercise extreme caution if they head outside. And if you see a down power line, of course, call your company, whether it's DTE or someone else, you need to call them so they are alerted, but also stay 25 feet away from that down line and whatever it's touching. If it's your fence or anything like that, just make sure we want to make sure that you stay safe. Reporting live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Yeah, great reminder, Megan. And if people don't have the number handy or you're worried about it, uh, call 911 as well. Ahead of the storm, Smart Bus Service making changes for the safety of riders and its drivers. All routes will be changed to navigate for the weather conditions. If you do take any of the routes, you should leave early. Riders are asked to expect some delays to the weekend. And you can track the buses in real time and check the schedules on the company's website.
A Detroit police officer and two suspects that were shot inside of an apartment building last night on Detroit's west side are all expected to make full recoveries. Detroit Police Department says the shooting happened about 11 o'clock last night on Burt Road near Davison West. Officers responded to a shot spotter run in the area, meaning that shots were coming from inside of that building. The officers went in, they heard the shots, and they encountered two suspects suspects and uh, traded gunfire. One of the officers was hit. The two suspects were also found to be wounded. They were taken to the hospital with the injured officer. All three, as I said, are expected to be okay. Two special masters now appointed to help redraw 13 Detroit State House and Senate seats after an order from federal judges. Michael Barber from BYU and Bernard Groffman of Cal Irvine have been selected for that job. This process is meant to fix Detroit's area maps that the federal panel ruled unconstitutional because the committee that did it considered race in the original uh, drawing of that. The new maps must be done in time for the House's elections later this year. A March 29th deadline has been set. Well, this is groundbreaking. Corwell Health opened its first full-service school-based clinic in Detroit, and it opened today at Detroit Edison Public School Academy. The on-site clinic brings a wide range of medical services to the student and mental health counseling for more than 1,400 students at the school. The clinic also provides care to those in the community between the ages of 3 and 21 and for special education students up to the age of 26. The clinic will help address the health care needs of the community where access to medical and behavioral services has historically been limited. What are your plans this evening? <laughs> How about getting a selfie with the national championship trophy? Oh, that sounds fun. 24 karat gold trophy is going to be on display at the M Den on State Street in Ann Arbor from 4 until 7 o'clock this afternoon. You can bet there'll be a line. <laughs> yeah, you might, might want to get there sooner than later. A new trophy is commissioned by the college football playoffs every year. Also today, you can celebrate the championship with Blake Corum, the offensive player of the game. That'll be at the Dick store in Ann Arbor from 6 to 730. So go get your selfie with the trophy. Go get an autograph from Blake Corum. Major Maybe plans for the evening. Done and done. <laughs> for the afternoon. <laughs> uh, and a reminder, it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. You should just hang in Ann Arbor, at least for today and tomorrow, because it's the National Championship Celebration Day on the campus of U of M. It's the parade that will kick off at the President's House and go to Schembechler Hall. And that kicks off at 4. And then there's an indoor celebration that you have to have a ticket for at Chrysler Center that gets underway at 7. The tickets for the lower bowl are 6 Upper Bowl are $30, and the proceeds are benefiting the Champion Circle Collective, which is the NIL circle benefiting student athletes, all student athletes, not yeah. just the football team. And if you just want to put your feet up and watch it, well, you can do that too because we're <laughs> going to put it all on TV. You can catch the whole thing on Local 4 Plus. Our coverage gets underway at 4 p.m. Streaming on Local 4 Plus. And remember, this is all predicated on the weather. So hopefully it. The parade will go off, but yeah. our coverage could be impacted by the weather. Yeah, well, I, depending on what they do. I mean, I, we would assume the parade's going to be fine. I right? think they're going to do it no matter what. <laughs> hopefully it's all good to go. Thank <laughs> you.